Well, howdy everyone, and here we go with my first ever review of a Canon RF lens, and appropriately, I'm starting with a new kit lens, the RF 24-105mm f4 L IS USM. It's basically the mirrorless version of Canon's incredibly popular EF 24-105mm f4 L lenses. This is a full-frame lens, and at the moment, Canon's EOS R system is exclusively made up of full-frame cameras. If you're buying this lens on its own, then it's on the expensive side. At the time of this review, it's $900 in the US, but over £1,000 here in the UK. Last time I checked, the pound was worth more than a dollar. Presumably, Canon just aren't interested in making inroads into the UK market. Time for a shopping trip to New York. The lens will be a little cheaper if you buy it as a kit lens with one of Canon's new EOS R cameras, however, and it's uh, <clears throat> much cheaper if you look on a grey market website, but I didn't tell you that, okay? Now, there's a reason why the EF mount versions of this lens are some of the best selling that Canon make. That zoom range of 24 to 105 mm on a full frame camera is greatly encompassing, going from a very wide angle to moderate telephoto and the maximum aperture of f4 stays the same throughout the zoom range, giving you a decent amount of light, as well as noticeably out of focus backgrounds if you zoom in, and making video work a bit easier too. And also, being an L lens, it should have superior build and image quality, we'll see about that in a minute. Another feature of the lens is image stabilisation, and this lens has one of Canon's most up to date systems. Here's some footage at 105mm with it turned off, and now turned on. It works completely silently, and does a great job of keeping our footage very still, and as you can see, it handles tilting and panning quite nicely without jerking around. Great for video work. It's much better than Sony's 24-105mm f4 lens, which I tested a while ago now. Let's take a closer look at build quality then. The lens is quite large, a tiny bit bigger than the original version, and it feels fairly solid to hold, although it is made of plastic, and not quite the toughest plastic in the world. It weighs 700 grams or 1.5 pounds or so, and it's based on a metal lens mount with decent weather sealing. The zoom ring turns quite smoothly and very evenly. It doesn't feel well damped, but there's no stickiness to it at any point. Related to zooming, this lens seems to be par focal from what I could see in my tests, meaning that the focus point doesn't change significantly as you zoom in and out. Also, as you can see here, there's almost no noticeable focus breathing as you focus in and out. More good news for video makers. The manual focus ring, as well as the zoom ring, is rubberized and turns nice and evenly. It's electronically coupled to the lens's focus motor, and it works really responsively. By the way, a cool feature of Canon's EOS R cameras is the focus guide you can enable if you choose to focus manually. Here it is at work, indicating which direction and how far you need to turn the focus ring, and turning a satisfying green when you've nailed it. Very enjoyable. Now let's look at the autofocus mechanism. It uses Canon's awesome Nano USM system. That means it's lightning fast, completely silent, and very accurate in stills mode and in video work. You simply can't get any better than this. Finally, at the front of the lens, and with a different texture to it, lies the control ring, a new feature in Canon's RF lenses. It can be set in your camera to control all kinds of things. I personally use it to change ISO at the moment, and it works with some nice gentle clicks to it. Canon actually offer a service to remove those clicks for you, for a price. Overall, the lens works and handles brilliantly well, with great electronics, and it's one of the best lenses for video work that I've ever seen. But the feel of the lens doesn't quite have that edge of toughness and quality that earlier generation L lenses are known for. Alright then, image quality. I'm testing on the highest resolution EOS R camera available at the time of publishing this video, the original Canon EOS R, with its 30 megapixel full frame sensor. In camera corrections have been turned on for this test. The results are pretty consistent, really. Let's start with image quality in the middle of the image. Straight from f4, this lens is always very sharp in the middle of your images with very good contrast. So, 
here you can see 24mm, 50mm and 105mm all at f4. It stays this sharp down to f16, where a little softness from diffraction starts to kick in. How about the corner image quality though? Let's take a look. I found that at the widest angle of 24mm at f4, the corner image quality is just good, and when you stop down to f5.6, slightly improved. That's as good as you get now at 24mm, zoom in a bit to 50mm, and corner sharpness is improved, being pretty nice straight from f4, and at f5.6, carrying a bit more contrast. Zoom all the way in to 105mm, and corner sharpness now is a bit weak at f4. There's a tiny improvement at f5.6, and a more noticeable one at f8. So, overall, this zoom lens is a pretty consistent performer, really, always very sharp in the middle, and generally pretty good in the corners. I also tested my older EF 24-105mm L lens using Canon's EF mount adapter on the same camera at the same time, and the two results were essentially about the same. The mirrorless RF lens seemed to be just a tiny bit sharper at 105mm, but the differences were so slight as to be basically attributable to human error or manufacturing variation. Alright then, let's look at distortion and vignetting. This is taken care of by in-camera corrections, but I like to see how lenses perform behind all of that. Mirrorless camera manufacturers have a very bad habit of under-designing their lenses in this area and letting your camera just correct everything, at the detriment of image quality, but Canon have done a better job than usual here. At the widest angle of 24mm, barrel distortion is moderate, but not too strong. The corners look a little dark at f4, stop down to f5.6 or f8 for more even illumination. Zoom in to about 30mm, and that distortion begins to flip from barrel into pin cushion, and zoom all the way in to 105mm for some fairly noticeable barrel distortion, and again, vignetting in the corners. And stop down to f5.6 or f8 to see those corners brighten up again. Moving on, how about close-up image quality? This lens can focus as closely as 45cm to your subject, just average for a zoom lens like this. The close-up image quality at f4 is a little bit poor, soft with colour fringing. Stop down to f5.6 to enjoy some more clarity, and at f8 you can finally enjoy fully sharp close-up images. Now let's see how the lens performs against bright lights. Contrast remains nice and high, but a number of small, flaring artefacts are visible when bright lights are somewhere in a picture frame. And finally, bokeh. An f4 lens shouldn't be your first choice for getting background separation in your pictures, but if you zoom in a bit you can get some pleasing results, and the quality of those out of focus backgrounds is decently soft. Overall, I think this lens is brilliant. For a full frame optic with a zoom range of over 4 times, its image quality is really good, although I was hoping for just a little more sharpness out of it, but the way it handles is probably an even stronger point. Its electronics are absolutely superb, and it's also one of the best lenses I can think of for handheld on the fly video work, unless you're shooting in very dark situations and you need a brighter aperture than f4. Anyone wanting to save some money could always get an older EF copy of the lens and use Canon's EF to RF mount adapter. You'll actually get very similar optical results, and it will work well enough. For those wanting the latest lens features and the best possible autofocus system, should just go straight for this native RF lens, and it definitely comes highly recommended.